Hi, boys and girls. This is Adrian from Audio Excellence in Canada. We just received um, a shipment from uh, Sonus Farber, and this is one, a part of the shipment, a pair of the Guarneri Homage Tradition speakers in red and the uh, stand. We're going to unbox it, and I'll show you uh, why I'm so excited about these speakers. But just as a background, the this is the fourth generation. The original generation, which came out, I want to say, in the 90s, a, a client of mine had been a very successful at the time uh, immigration lawyer, and he did a lot of work in Asia. So one day out of the blue, he came in and he said, you got to see what I just bought. And he brings in this pair of bookshelf speakers. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, uh, Jer Jerry, if you can find pictures uh, on the internet, maybe insert them. These were the original Guarneri speakers. This absolutely stunning. And they were finished in walnut. Um, you have to see it and touch it to understand what I'm talking about. And then when I listened to it, I absolutely fell in love. Didn't have any deep bass, didn't have any incredible high frequency airiness and so on. But what it did was it emotionally captivated me. I, it, especially when you played string quartets, um, uh, Baroque uh, uh, quartets, any kind of smaller ensembles, voices. Oh my God, it just absolutely just drew you into the music and, and fall in love. And then when you see the stand that was attached to it, the stand, uh, well, first of all, the, the speakers in the front, the grill had the uh, strings, which, which was the progenitor of all the uh, Sonus Faber speaker grills today. So the strings in the front, and then the stand had Carrera marble, um, just just truly a work of art. To this day, I, I when I think of those speakers, I, I have these incredible feelings. Anyway, so uh, we have virtually all the Sonus Fabers on display, and except for these, and I've been wanting to have a pair of these on the floor for quite a while, and finally I decided let's order them. So we're gonna unbox these and show you what they look like. So the speakers are stapled on top as well so that they pack well. And if you notice that the cardboard is very thick quality, so the boxes can be reused over and over again. And they also protect the speakers well. Now look at this. This is my first time unboxing these, so I have no idea what they look like on the inside. Look at this, this is a beautiful wood crate with um, the words Guarneri, Sonus, Faber somehow um, emblazoned on them. This is stunning. And it looks like they are screwed in. So we're gonna have to get um, a screwdriver and unbox these. So let me just get them out of the cardboard box first. That's a beautiful crate, beautiful way to ship. All right, we're gonna pause this video. I'm gonna go get a screwdriver and we're gonna unbox this, okay? Look at that. See, even the top is made in such a way so that the inside fits perfectly. Really, come see this. This is how they pack the speaker. That's how they all should be packed. Look at that. Isn't that great? Oh, by the way, has everybody seen our custom Sonus Farber carpet? What do you call it? So this, this, this came to from the, Sonus Farber. So this compared to Golden Air, you're definitely paying for this, but this will never be damaged on the way here. So these are the uh, Sonus Farber grills. So when you unwrap them, they become a top metal piece and a bottom metal piece, which pushes into the speaker. And you've got these strings that uh, resemble the idea of uh, a string instrument. Look, they even include polishing fluid. 
So they think of everything. Look at this. Everyday luxury. What cleaning, is it? Cleaning cloth. Oh, wow. It's beautiful catalog. That's classy. Okay, so since we're audiophiles, we're not going to bother reading it. Even it's like it's tight. Yeah. Well, I was just showing uh, Jerry. Look, the top cover even has a smaller insert piece so that it fits perfectly. Okay, here we go. Wilson Audio needs to take a look at this cabinet. Look at this, Sonus Faber, take your speaker out of the packaging carefully to avoid any damage to the tweeter. So the tweeter's in the front here. There we go. So if they were to improve this, what they should have is like a bag with handles and you can pull it straight out. And the other thing that's interesting is that the, the plastic cover on the inside is, again, very thick uh, gauge. So it's not one of those thin little things. That's the only part I don't really like about it, because this strap is actually um, it's just velcro, ta ta taped on. Or is it, is it I think it's just Velcro. Velcro. Yeah, it's just Velcro. And then you have a nice cloth sock. Ooh. I'm not sure if the, the, the camera will capture this, but this That's is red. stunning finish. Look at that finish. It's shiny, very shiny. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jerry, you can edit that part out. <laughs> Look at that. And and this, by the way, is apparently glass with um, the Sonus Farber logo engraved on the top. Absolutely gorgeous. It's amazing they provide an ashtray for it. <laughs> That's what people say. It reminds them of an ashtray. So this is the leather front with the um, one inch silk dome tweeter. Um, this, by the way, this uh, arrangement here, if you look very carefully from the side, and I, again, I don't know if uh, Jerry can capture it, there's an actual tip of this on the other side that's touching the apex of the dome. That's why they call it the damped apex dome. And the reasoning behind it, this, by the way, is uh, all patented. The reasoning behind is that uh, with silk domes, um, they have, can you capture that? Yes. Yeah. Um, silk domes have some tremendous benefits. They have gorgeous natural sound, um, uh, very um, effortless without being harsh. The problem is at higher frequencies and at high levels, silk domes start to distort. And so um, uh, for years, many manufacturers have been trying to figure out how best to deal with this. And uh, Paolo and his team um, hit on this idea that if they were to have um, a little tip that contacts the um, apex of the dome, they can stop the silk dome from uh, uh, distorting at very high frequencies and high levels. And um, uh, under measurements, they've been able to prove that. And that's why they've got uh, uh, a patent on it. This arrangement. Um, with the tweeter and the mid-range woofer is something that is uh, seen throughout the Sonus Farber range. They call it the voice of Sonus Farber. And again, you've got uh, beautiful leather over here and everything. You, you, if you go on the website, you can see uh, pictures of how artisans put the speaker together. Um, this is a double curved uh, uh, cabinet. So the compound curve allows the speaker to have even more rigidity, and at the same time, more volume. So the back actually um, is wider than the front. And so having more volume allows the bass to go lower, plays louder, and also has a lot less internal um, um, uh, pressure, refer um, what do you call it, reflection? Standing waves. Standing waves, there you go. <clears throat> oh, a couple more things. 
So first of all, the binding posts are all um, custom made. And again, I don't know if um, Jerry can come close and see it, but right at the very top here, there are small little engraving uh, that says Sona's Farber. Can you see it? Just barely. Barely see it. Uh, just, just a point uh, there is is the 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 attention to detail that the factory does. Uh, this metal rib structure in the back here does two things. One is that you can see there that's the port for the um, base to uh, exit, but at the same time, <coughs> uh, the the uh, the elongated port allows the air to come out without uh, creating typical uh, um, air turbulence noises, chuffing, that kind of thing. And then the other reason that it's here, it's part of what Sonus Farber calls the exoskeleton. This um, vertical rib uh, structure is attached directly to a top metal plate and a bottom metal plate, and it actually works like a clamp onto the uh, cabinet. So it makes the cabinet even more rigid and non-resonant. So that's the basics of the speaker. Oh, I should say, the speakers um, are, let's see, 16,900 US dollars. Um, the mid-range woofer is, it's a six inch woofer and it's made of cellulose pulp with a uh, neodymium magnet motor system. And that's the speaker. So now we're gonna open up the stand. Okay. So, um, Gary, I guess at this point you can um, fast forward. Okay. Instructions. IKEA instructions. Look at this pictogram. <laughs> he even has the uh, little Allen key, sort of like uh, IKEA. <laughs> okay, so we'll put this aside. Oh, look at this. Okay, so this is what we see when we take it out. Um, these are the bottom spikes. Wow, they're heavy. These are not the typical light spikes. They're actually very heavy. And then these are floor protectors. And these are the bolts that attach the speaker to the spikes. More bolts. And Allen key. So let me see. Okay, so let's take this one out and see what it's about. Ta-da! And again, I don't know if you can see, but this is actually a carbon fiber monocoque. Um, it was developed uh, uh, in conjunction with the Pagani Automobili company. Um, people who are famous for those uh, Pagani automobiles. And um, the inside um, structure is acoustically damped and filled with some material to make it even more non-resonant. Now, why carbon fiber? Carbon fiber is a lot lighter than aluminum, metal, um, uh, and, and um, a marble, which is what the early generations of the stands were made of. But carbon fiber is incredibly strong. It's why Formula One vehicles, the chassis are made of carbon fiber. Um, and they're also very, very light, which is nice uh, for people like us who have to carry them all the time. Um, then at the bottom here is where I guess you attach the spikes. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I mm -hmm. guess that's right. How does it attach at the top? Uh, they come with bolts. Oh. So look, 
IKEA pictograms. Oh. <laughs> you have to be Swedish to figure this out. <laughs> so oh, the other thing that's interesting, oh, oh. from an aesthetic standpoint, if you if you shoot the side, you'll notice that there's a curve. It's not just straight up and down. It's actually curved. No, no, no. That's the bottom. That's the bottom? Yeah. <laughs> so there's a plate. Oh, so, that's right. That's right. And you hear it's filled. That's right. There so. Okay, there we go. So the speak, yeah, there's a bottom plate which you attach. Oh, the plate's heavy. See, Philip is Swedish somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I do like meatballs. This is one solid block of aluminum. Whoa, that's worth more than most speakers. So, I mean, that's that's like. 15 millimeters thick. I don't speak millimeters. Okay, so. I believe that's the front. Yeah, that's where the. So that's the, the logo front, is. and that's the front as well? That's the front. Uh, yeah. So it does locating pins, and then you have to screw it in. Oh, that is cool. Is that right? Yeah, so those are locating pins. Oh, wow. And then there's four screws. That is smart. Yeah, it's, well, it's. Not an inexpensive speaker, and I'm not. Yes, but but. But very well thought out, very well engineered. I've never uh, seen that in the audio industry. Or, or, or is Sonus Faber trying to be as good as the Germans and a few other manufacturers, the Japanese now, and not just beautiful, but actually extremely well thought out and engineered and actually built? Wow, that's pretty impressive. A few moments later. Okay, moment of truth. So if you come close, uh, Jerry, you can see the three locator pins. And that uh, assures that the speaker will sit perfectly on the top pedestal. And here we go. There we go. So I was commenting earlier that this is a very interesting aesthetic. The top uh, looks a little bit uh, old school, old world. And then you couple that with um, 21st century technology, carbon fiber. This is absolutely gorgeous. And then one huge slab of aluminum. And then a small little discreet uh, metal um, sign that says Sonus Fiber. I really like it. Okay, we should... Uh, where's the grip? Oh, it's in the bag. You know there's a top and bottom, right? No, I didn't. So the top is smooth. Where the, it actually, so sure, that's the sure top. Everybody. So when you do the grill, you see the top here? That's where it wraps around. So there's pieces that go around. At the bottom, you see these loose ends? So, okay. see. can you see, is it bright enough? So when you pull it tight, it locks in, but this looks kind of unruly. This looks very nice. So when you look at it. Oh, I see what you mean when you say top yeah. or bottom. You're talking about the strings. Yep. The way that they're finished. Yep. And in some cases, they're actually angled depending on the unit, but these are all straight in the front now. So what we normally do is just do this. They are a little bit stretchy. And they will not prevent children from doing this. Okay, so we now have my new toy. Oh, is it going in your office, Adrian? No, I don't think so. New field? By the way, did we ever do that? Yeah, we did the unboxing of the um, the new Macintosh, did we not? Yeah. The new. We uh, haven't fired it up yet. It's yeah, still. Yeah. Where is it? I mean, it's back there. It's there. back there. Look at this. We can break Our both. new toy. Ta da! Which I think vid, uh, uh, Jerry's going to drop the video shortly as well. That's the new toy. You, do, you don't get this part with it. This is uh, something else. Oh, look, another ashtray. Look at that. That is sexy. That is sexy. Okay, that's it for this video. We'll see you another time. Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada. Philip's back, walking away from us as usual. And Jerry behind the camera, who was fired from Magna, which I said earlier Big in news. another video. Big news. But... <laughs>
<laughs> but he didn't turn the mic on, so we couldn't do it that time. Factual so we, news. Factual <laughs> news. 